all three digit numbers without repetition of digits, right? Uh, obtained, obtained by using three non-zero digits which are multiples of three. So I don't know they have this love for multiple of three, isn't it? So a number is a multiple of three when, uh, you know, it's three or six or nine. Most of you can also say zero is also a multiple of three, but he has already written non-zero. So we won't consider zero. Three, six, nine. He says, let S be their sum. So you write all three digit numbers using three, six, and nine. So guys, this is three, six, nine, or three, nine, six, or six, three, nine, or six, nine, three. 936 or 963. These are the six numbers that would be formed. And then he says S be the sum. Now, rather than you know performing the whole sum, now please pay attention. 9 comes 2 times, 6 comes 2 times, and 3 comes 2 times. In every single line, you would see the same thing. So obviously, 9, 3, 6, and 9, every time they are coming 2, 2 times. Every time they are coming two two times, agreed, and every line. So this line has the same sum, this line has the same sum, this line has the same sum, into 1, 1, 1. This would be the sum of all these numbers, right? So you realize it is actually 1 into 1 into 1, into, this is 3 plus 6 plus 9, 18, into 2. So I'm opening up 1, 1, 1 is 37, into 3, into 18 is 9, into 2, into 2, legit. So now I have written this as a total sum. You can easily, you know, add up. Otherwise also, see, 3 plus 6 plus 9, it comes out to be 918. So this sum is 36. 3 carry. 36 plus 3, 9. 36, 3, 9, 9, 6. Right? But I have just written it as a factor. Now he says, let S be the sum. So this is your S. This is your S. Now, which of the following is correct? First, S is divisible by 74. What is 74? 70, 37 into 2 is 74. So, you realize there is 37, there is 2. So, definitely S is uh, always divisible by 74. And second, S is divisible by 9. Yes, we have 9 over here. S is also divisible by 9. So, both options 1 and 2. So please guys, seriously, this is an amazing question, right? I hope you got it, right guys? So kindly make a note of it. He says, a person X from place A and another person Y from place B. So there are two places, A and B, all right? X is from A and another person Y is from B. Yes, at the same time to walk towards each other. The places are separated by a distance of 15 kilometers. So distance between AB is 15 kilometers. All right. So he says, X uh, walks with the uniform speed of 1.5 kilometer per hour. So X has a speed of 1.5 kilometer per hour, right? And then he says, Y walks with the uniform speed of one kilometer per hour. 1 kilometer per hour in first hour, 1.25, 1.25 kilometer in second, 1.5. So it's like 1 kilometer, 1.25 in second hour. So first hour, second hour, 1.5 in third, and so on, right? This is the question given to you. This is a statement given to you. Let's talk about question. He says, which of the following is true? They take five hours to meet each other. Now listen, in five hours, in five hours, x would travel 1.5 into 5, which is 7.5 in five hours, x would travel 7.5 kilometer and similarly y would travel 1, 1 1.25, 1.5, 1.75 1 and 2. Right. So just check out what is the sum total of this 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, 6 and then you know 7, 7.5. So both have traveled 7.7.5 and 7.5 and what is 7.5 plus 7.5 it is 15 which is the distance between them. So definitely this is true. They would take 5 hours to meet 
and secondly he says they would meet between mid to midway between a and b yes 7.5 7.5 definitely would be midway absolutely right right so second is also true so both 1 and 2 are true both 1 and 2 are true tell me guys now you understand the dimensions they are working with they are putting questions on speed and time and distance but they are actually using data sufficiency as a tool isn't it now let's see the next one he says a boy plays with the ball he drops it from a height of 1.5 meters so this is your height give it 1.5 meter right 1.5 meter which is 150 centimeters right so he says every time the ball hits the ground it bounces every time the ball hit the ground it bounces uh, uh to attain the height of height 4/5 of the previous height 4/5 of the previous height so i would say if you are intelligent 4/5 is actually equal to 80% so it would be easier to find 80% a ball does not bounce further if previous height is less than 50 cm if the previous height is less than 50 cm he says uh, what is the number of times ball hit the ground before the ball stops bouncing first time this is where it hit the ball ground then it goes up how much up 80% of 150 comes out to be 120 so it goes 120 up and goes back hits the ground hits the ground all right 4/5th 120 hits the ground then what is 80% of 120 96 it goes up 96 hits the ground again so the hitting the ground i am making those rounds right those small dots right this these are this is where they the ball is hitting the ground first time hit went back up second time hit went back up third time hit now again it is 80% of 96 80% of 96 or 1/4 4 by 5th of 96 it comes out to be 76.8 so again it goes see this was 96 then again it goes up 76.8 and comes back 76.8 all right 76 up 76 down again you say what is 80% 4/5 of 76.8 4/5 of 76.8 it is 61.44 so it goes down it goes up 61.44 and comes down 61.44 say i'm just making it up down up down and once again you say what is 80% of 61.44 80% of 61.44 guys 80% of 61.44 this is what we need to do now right so see 150 one hit 121 hit 96 one hit 70 six point uh, Eight uh, one hit sixty one point four one hit. Now you need to find is four fifth of sixty one point four fifth of sixty one point four 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 fifth of sixty one point four four, which actually guys comes out to be now listen. See one fifty one hit one twenty second hit. 96 third hit, 976 fourth hit, and 61.44, and this is going to be less than 50. It is going to be less than 50, right? So we said that the previous height is less than 50. So how many times it has hit the ball? It it has hit the ground five times. It has hit the ground. Just check it out. Clear? All right. See, one at one fifty, one at one twenty, one at ninety six, one at seventy six point eight, and one at sixty one point five. So it has hit the ground five times directly. 
150 पे आया फिर गोज अप 120 गोज डाउन 120 फिर से हिट किया गोज अप 96 गोज डाउन 96 थर्ड टाइम हिट गोज अप 76.8 गोज डाउन 76.8 हिट 61.44 गोज डाउन 61.44 एंड व्हेन आई फाउंड 4/5 ऑफ 61.44 इट वाज एक्चुअली लेस देन 50 सो फाइव टाइम्स ऑलराइट सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर गाइस Every question is a work of art over here, right? He says a man completed seven eighth of the job in twenty one days. And how many more days will it take for him to finish the job if quantum of work is further increased by fifty percent? So seven eighth in twenty one days. So total total would be done in seven eighth of total in twenty uh, one days. So seventy twenty one by seven by eight, twenty four days. So 100% work is done in 24 days. So 50% more, which means 150% work would be done in 24 plus 12, 36 days, isn't it? 24 plus 12, आधा 50 पर 100% in what? 24 days, 50% more in 12 days. So 24 plus 12, 36 days. So how much? Ah, uh, you know, he says how many more days are required? 21 days were required. Now 36 days are required. 36 minus 21 is 15. 15 days are required.